23 bishops of the Western and Karnataka regions from the Episcopal Conference of India come to greet Your Holiness four months back. How much priestly ministry has been carried out in the Archdiocese as prefect of an important Roman congregation and now in gratitude for your effective leadership in our very challenging times. We greet you with sentiments of heartfelt loyalty and obedience as we come on this oddly shadow of the terrorist attack two days back in New Delhi, but we are meeting also on the feast of the birthday of Our Lady who brought to us the Prince of Peace. We come from the federal states of Maharashtra, Karnataka, Gujarat and Goa, situated on the western part of India. We are from 21 dioceses, including the five metropolitan seas of Goa. We also have distinctive features. In our task, we are assisted by 1,719 religious sisters and 338 religious brothers in our dioceses. The belt has given many vocations, with missionaries going all over the country and a few even abroad. A particular point of focus has therefore been formation in our seminaries. Predominantly non-Christian milieu, with just 1.8% in a country of over 1 billion. Hence, inter-religious dialogue, not just a choice, but a necessity. To revitalize our parishes, we have adopted the basic Christian large number of religious in our area, closer collaboration of bishops, priests and religious is continuously sought. The Karnataka region, more homogeneous in nature than the Western region, has formed a pastoral plan for the region with a very focused in Congress held in Mumbai in October 2009. But we also have our challenges. Family life, particularly in the urban areas. A greater secularization noticeable among the youth in our cities. And a laity that much needs better organized faith formation and spiritual formation programs. After these 10 days in Rome, we hope to return back with renewed enthusiasm, accompanied with the assurance of your prayers, strengthened by your blessings, and guided by your counsel, so that we can spend ourselves with the mission our Lord Jesus Christ has given us. On behalf of us all, and of the whole church in India, I once express, again express to your holiness our affectionate greetings and sentiments of respect. Rebid, we humbly ask you to bless us, our people back home, and our country, India. Thank you, Your Holiness, for this audience with you. Eminence, dear brothers and bishops, I offer you a warm fraternal welcome. On the occasion of your visit at Limina Apostolorum, a further occasion to deepen the communion that exists between the Church in India and the See of Peter, and an opportunity to rejoice in the universality of the Church. I wish to thank Cardinal Oswald Gracious for his kind words offered on your behalf and in the name of those entrusted to your pastoral care. My cordial greetings also go to the priests, the men and women religious, and laity whom you shepherd. Please assure them of my prayers and solicitude. The Church in India is blessed with a multitude of institutions which are intended to be expressions of the love of God for humanity through the charity and example of the clergy, religious and lay faithful who staff them. By means of her parishes, schools and orphanages, as well as her hospitals, clinics and dispensaries, the Church makes an invaluable contribution to the well-being not only of Catholics, but of society at large. Among these institutions in your region, a special place is held by the schools, which are an outstanding witness to a commitment to the education and formation of our dear young people. The efforts made by the whole Christian community to prepare the young citizens of your noble country to build a more just and prosperous society have long been a hallmark of the Church in your diocese and throughout India. In helping the spiritual, intellectual and moral faculties of the students to mature, Catholic schools should continue to develop a capacity for sound judgment and introduce them to the heritage 
peak visited to them by former generations, thus fostering a sense of values and preparing the puppets for a happy and productive life. Productive life. I encourage you to continue to pay close attention to the quality of instruction in the schools present in your dioceses, to ensure that they be genuinely Catholic and therefore capable of passing on those truths and values necessary for the salvation of souls and the upbuilding of society. Of course, Catholic schools are not the only means by which the Church seeks to instruct and to edify her people in intellectual and moral truths. As you know, all of the Church's activities are meant to glorify God and fill his people with the truth that sets us free. This saving truth at the heart of the deposit of faith must remain the foundation of all the Church endeavors, proposed to us as always with respect, but also without compromise. The capacity to present the truth gently but firmly is a gift to be nurtured, especially among those who teach in Catholic institutes of higher education and those who are charged with the ecclesial task of educating seminarians, religious or the lay faithful, whether in theology, catechetical studies or Christian spirituality. Those who teach in the name of the Church have a particular obligation faithfully to hand on the riches of the tradition in accordance with the magisterium and in a way that responds to the needs of today, while students have the right to receive the fullness of the intellectual and spiritual heritage of the Church. Having received the benefits of a sound formation dedicated to charity and truth, the clergy, religious and lay leaders of the Christian community will be better able to contribute to the growth of the Church and the advancement of Indian society. The various members of the Church will then bear witness to the love of God for all humanity as they enter into contact with the world, providing a solid Christian testimony, testimony in friendship, respect and love and striving not to condemn the world, but to offer it the gift of salvation. Encourage souls involved in, the, in education, whether priests, religious society, to deepen their faith in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen from the dead. Enable them to reach out to their neighbors that by their word and example, they may more effectively proclaim Christ as the way, the truth and the life. A significant role of witness to Jesus Christ is carried out in your country by men and women religious who are the often unsung heralds of the Church's vitality locally. Above and beyond the apostolic labors, however, religious and the lives they lead are, are a source of spiritual fruitfulness for the entire Christian community. As they open themselves to the grace of God, Religious men and women inspire others to respond with trust, humility, and joy to the invitation of the Lord to follow him. In this regard, my dear brother bishops, I know that you are aware of the many factors which inhibit spiritual and vocational growth, particularly among young people. Yet we know that it is Jesus Christ alone who responds to our deepest longings and who gives true meaning to our lives. Only in him can our hearts truly find rest. Continue, therefore, to speak to young people and to encourage them to consider seriously their consecrated or priestly life. Speak with parents about their indispensable role in encouraging and supporting such vocations and lead your people in prayer to the Lord of the harvest that they may send many more laborers into his harvest. With these thoughts, dear brother bishops, I renew to you my sentiments of affection and esteem. I commend all of you to the intercession of Mary, Mother of the Church, assuring you of my prayers for you, 
and for souls entrusted to pastoral care, I am pleased to impart my apostolic blessing as a pledge of grace and peace in the Lord. Thank you for your attention.